Welcome traders to today's next installment in our online education series. Um, if you can hear me loud and clear and you can see a Tickmill welcome screen, could you please type a Y in the chat box, please? Good stuff. Thanks very much. We will uh, we'll get going now. Um, but before we do, as always, incredibly important that, um, that we take a minute <clears throat> just to review the disclaimer. So we're all well aware at this stage, hopefully, of the, um, of the risk implications of trading foreign exchange. But like I say to you each week, you're doing everything you can uh, to mitigate that risk by, um, by attending these education sessions. And hopefully, um, as we're progressing through the weeks now, you're starting to, um, to improve your, your base level of knowledge, and that will ultimately lead to better, uh, making better trading decisions as and when you, uh, you move forward to, uh, to trade your accounts. So, uh, let me just briefly give you uh, an introduction to myself. Most of you will know who I am, hopefully, by this stage, but for those who are attending today for the first time, um, as you can see, my name is Patrick Munley. Um, I'm a fund manager, a mentor, and a market commentator. Um, after I graduated from King's College London, I went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup. Um, I then moved on to explore my passion for markets. I researched, developed, tested, and implemented a robust trading plan underpinned by a rigorous risk management strategy. Uh, this plan has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Um, since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through my managed account service, uh, delivering annual positive returns, and I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've personally mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and, more importantly, the mental skills to reap consistent returns from the market. I consult, I've, over the years, I've consulted numerous brokers and trading education brands, contributing written webinar and live presentation content on a range of topics from market analysis to trading strategy development and more importantly, execution. In addition to my fund management responsibilities, which is now largely automated and an end of day process, um, and my private mentoring, I also manage a proprietary trading team for a company called Littlefish FX. And I'm also obviously the resident market expert for Tickmill. And most recently, I've been retained as head of trading and trader education for an emerging trader education brand called FX Career Swap, offering education and funding to retail trading talent. So that gives you a flavor of, of where I'm coming from. What we're actually going to do today is we're going to jump off the slides and, um, and we're going to move into. Uh, looking at the charts and, um, and we're going to start working through the charts and, uh, and looking at some, uh, some of the uh, technical setups that we want to uh, review over the coming weeks as we start to build out our, our education here and we start to look at more practical application of the theory that we're learning. So we're going to be starting to use, uh, use live charts uh, to build that up. Last week, obviously, we looked at dual time frame momentum. Let's just pull up an example of that, when, what I mean by dual time and momentum. Um, here we have uh, both a daily and a, a 60 minute chart of, of the euro dollar. And um, what we were looking at is how we can use um, a momentum study, in this instance it's the stochastic, uh, the RSI stochastic, to essentially give us an objective view on um, multiple time frame momentum. Now, obviously, um, we, we, uh, in this instance, I'm, I'm just using two time frames. I, um, I get my trend, uh, trend direction from the daily time frame, and then we look for um, a confirmation of that potential um, daily trend on the intraday time frame, which for me is, um, is an hourly chart. Um, we looked last week at how we could look for um, shorter time frame momentum reversals to coincide with that higher time frame um, reversal. 
Now, importantly, a momentum reversal does not indicate where the market is within the price trend or if the trend itself is at or near reversal. What we're going to look at today, which is practical pattern recognition, is the second of our technical factors that we're going to learn about that will provide the pieces of information that we'll ultimately be using to make trading decisions. So, what is the purpose of, of pattern recognition? Well, we want to identify whether a market is in a trend or a correction, okay? So this is a, a primary piece of information that we want to glean when we open our charts. We want to ascertain whether the pattern conditions have been met that typically warn a trend or a correction is near completion, okay? And then we want to be able to, from a probabilistic perspective, identify what is likely to follow the completion of a trend or a correction. So this is valuable information for practical trade strategies for any market and any time frame. Like I said, I'm going to focus on the hourly time frames and the daily time frames. In this session, we're going to learn the one important guideline that will indicate if the market is likely in a trend or in a correction and two simple patterns that will help to identify if the minimum condition has been met that indicate the completion of a trend or the completion of a correction. It can be very useful, and by that I mean profitable, for a trader to be aware of whether a market is making a trend or correction, and what the position of the market is within the overall trend or correction. Simple guidelines for pattern recognition and simple patterns in this session are primarily based upon Elliott Wave theory. Now, you may already have had some exposure to Elliott Wave analysis and probably, like many traders, become confused by the overcomplicated approach to the various degrees of cycles and subdivisions and alternate wave counts that e Elliott Wave theorists, and note there that I refer to theorists, because a lot of Elliott Wave so-called practitioners are, at, are actually just analysts who are great at highlighting the uh, Elliott Wave function within the market in hindsight. Unfortunately, we can't trade with hindsight. We can only trade the market in front of us. So what we want to do today, and the purpose of today's session, is to learn a, a simple approach, a simple and practical approach to pattern recognition that will give us a clearer understanding of where we stand within a trend and that we're, a made, that we're easily able to execute a potential trade based upon that understanding. So to my mind, Elliott Wave theory has been overcomplicated by, like I say, the Elliott Wave analysts as opposed to people actually trading the markets. I know traders who got totally confused by Elliott Wave and have become basically paralyzed by the never-ending levels of analysis that can take place. What we're going to look at today is a guideline and, and a few basic patterns that repeat within the market over and over again. We, can, we should be able to identify these quickly and apply them practically for trading purposes. We're going to learn how to look at any section of market data on pretty much any time frame, but like I said, I might focus on the daily and hourly time frame, to quickly determine if a market is likely in a trend or a correction, and if the pattern conditions have been made to complete or potentially complete a trend or correction. We'll also learn how and why this information is valuable and how to make it part of a trading plan. Pattern guidelines that we're going to learn today on trends or, or corrections do not involve complicated counting schemes or getting lost in the paralysis of analysis and having to flip between uh, daily, hourly, five minute, 15 minute charts or whatever to basically get a thorough understanding of where we might be within the trend. So what we're looking to do today and the purpose of today's session is to identify patterns whereby we can use the information to make specific, practical trade decisions, which of course is what this, which is of course as traders is what we're all about. We want to be able to glean information quickly from the market, which allows us with a relatively simple decision-making process to identify whether or not there is a high probability trade to be taken. So, what are the two important pieces of information that we want 
to be able to identify. Well, one is the market for a trend or correction, and what is the position of the market within that trend? So let's look at whether a market is in the trend or correction first. This simple, I have a simple piece of information that will be very helpful to define this. The key to identifying if a market is making correction, if a market is making a correction, it should not take out the extreme that began the prior trend. Okay, so if a market is making a correction, it should not take out the extreme that began the prior trend but should eventually continue the trend direction prior to the correction and make a new extreme. So on the chart here, this is a um, chart of the dollar index, and we're just using this for example purposes at this stage, just so you can see on a chart how this information looks. So we have a decline from a high, we make a swing low, and then we, we make a, a, a correction, and note again, looking at our typing and our stochastic um, our RSI stochastic, we can use the RSI stochastic to give us an objective view on the market action. So price moves up from a reaction low to a reaction high. We have the um, stochastic trading up into um, the overbought zone. We then make a correction versus the reaction high, creating a secondary swing low. And we then make a third corrective. We then make a third corrective leg. So we have an A, B, C pattern. Yes. And then there, that leg terminates the correction. And in a minute, we're going to go into the details as to how we can use that information. But just visually, we want to be able to track this for now. And then we ultimately, without taking out the prior extreme high, which we just referenced, okay, we ultimately then break down through the, the prior swing low and continue to develop in a trend pattern. Okay, so this shows that the market is making a decline. Uh, and sorry, that the market is continuing its decline after a corrective advance. Now there is one simple pattern guideline that's very reliable to warn if a market is probably making a correction and not a new trend to a new extreme. If a market overlaps a section, more than likely it's making a correction. An overlap is when a market makes a new high or low and then trades back into the range of the prior section. So if we think about this in terms of the pattern here, we have a reaction low and a reaction high. Okay, so that forms our A leg of the correction. We then pulled back to give us a B leg of the correction and we then made a new high. Okay, so we made a new swing high, which we're referring to as our C point. Now, price then trades back into the prior section of the A of the A B leg. Okay, so that is an overlapping price move. And we then take out the B point and we ultimately trade to new lows. Okay. So this is an ideal structure to give us an, a relatively easy way of identifying whether or not we are in a corrective phase. So it, again, if we overlap after making a new high or low and trade back into the range of the prior section, this suggests, only suggests, and you know we're always using the, the words probability and potential here because we don't know for certain, the market can do anything at any time, but what we're looking to do is increase our, our probabilistic perspective. And this tells us once we complete an ABC correction and trade back into the prior section that we are probably in a corrective phase. Now, this is important. I know as we proceed through um, on, uh, the upcoming sessions and we start to look in more detail at strategies, it's very important that we understand that whatever strategy I'm teaching, it will not be profitable for every single trade. And the examples I show. We are going to look at some examples where the pattern doesn't actually work out. Okay, not every color correction will have an overlap of swings before the correction is complete, and not every overlap of swings will necessarily be part of a correction. Always remember there are no sure things with any type of trading strategy. However, we want to put the odds in our favor and give ourselves an edge by identifying conditions with a high probability outcome. If most swings overlaps are part of a correction, we can use that as a guideline, as an important part of a trading plan. 
and can make it to use low risk, high probability trading decisions. If overlapping swings are typically a part of a correction, it implies a correction will usually have at least three swings. Okay, because how can we identify whether or not we traded back into the prior section if, we're only, if we only have one swing to reference? However, corrections may take many forms and many have more than three swings. Traders who, well, I, I refer to them as analysts who are obsessed with early trade, have ultimately identified 13 complex corrective patterns, not including the so-called irregular ABCs. But for our purposes, the most important piece of information is a correction should at least have three distinctive swings. We're going to keep this as simple as possible, and we're going to work on the assumption that a correction will have at least three sections, and we reference them as ABC. Okay? A correction will often have more than three swings, or form other than a simple ABC, but we always want to look first for at least three, three, uh, three sections. So as a guideline, the wave C, so this is our wave C, let me just, uh, let me move, uh, we'll just get rid of that for a second so we can see what we're looking at here in a bit more detail. So this is our A, B, C, these are three sections. We'll actually blow this chart up a bit here so you can see even more clearly. Pull that down there and bring that up. So we have A, B, and C here. Okay, so wave C should exceed the extreme of wave A. Check. Okay, so our C point exceeds A. Okay, if the market trades back into the range of wave A, okay. The minimum condition for the pattern has been achieved. So what we get, this is our A to B leg here. We trade back into the range of our AB. Yeah? Does that make sense to everyone? Can I get a Y in the chat box if you're following along with what I'm saying at the moment? So if a minimum condition is that C exceeds A and then price trades back into the range of the A level. Okay, that confirms that gives us a minimum. Okay, we've got a, one second. The correct uh, question here: um, Do you mark your point on the spikes? Is absolutely, Aruna. We take the absolute high and the absolute low. That's a good question because I'm sure that, uh, that other people were thinking that. So thanks for for asking that. We absolutely do. We measure from the extreme of the candle because what we're interested in is the you know the entire price range the body of the candle basically shows us where we you know we've opened and closed but the tails show us the highs and lows of that particular piece of data okay now when can we when can we get an even better confirmation that um that our our correction is complete well one piece of information that will help confirm that is if we trade through our b swing low okay so we can get an even greater sense of confidence that our ABC pattern is complete once we trade through our B point low. Okay. So let's just review those three quick guidelines here that we have for our ABC pattern. We have our reaction low. Our reaction high is our A point. We then have the A to B. And we know that the pattern, we know that the correction is potentially complete once the C leg exceeds the A high. Okay, so we know at this stage that we're potentially seeing a corrective pattern complete. Once we trade back into the range of A, we get further confirmation. And once we take out the B point, we can consider that pattern confirmed. Now, again, incredibly important here, I am not suggesting that by any by any means that every time that a C point exceeds an A and we trade back into A and take out B, that that is going to mean that a correction is complete. Again, we're working in probabilities and what I'm saying to you is more often than not, so giving us a higher probability scenario, when this pattern meets these criteria, a correction is complete, okay? Does everyone follow along? Can everybody who is, is in the room, can you type a Y in the chat box if you're following so that I know this is making sense to people? Good. 
Good stuff. Right, so let's start to look now at how this ABC pattern can give us a high probability trading scenario. So in this instance, once we get our ABC point complete, we get a bearish rejection candle. And like I say, once we take out the B point, we can consider the pattern complete, correction complete. Now, one simple way that you can look to trade this scenario is if we use the uh, tool here, we can see that we could, we, we can think to ourselves, right, now that we know that from a probability perspective, the A, uh, the, the price is trading back below uh, the B point, we actually could use the B point as our trigger to enter a trade with our stop just above the C point. And what I like to do in terms of um, personal risk reward is that I'm always looking to make two times my risk as a minimum for a target for my trade. So in this instance, if we were using a break of the structure, so once we take out the B point in the swing and we're using our C high, because we know in this instance, if this, if the, if, um, if this correction is complete, we should not exceed the C point on this break of the B point. Does that make sense to everyone, yeah? So if this pattern is complete, if the correction is complete, we should not exceed C once we have taken out B. Yeah? And then we're looking, if, if we're trading that break, we're looking to put a stop just above our C point, and then we're looking for a minimum of two times our risk to our reward. So in this instance, we've been triggered into the trade, price consolidates, pulls back, but again, note we don't take out the C point, price eventually rolls over, we trade some new lows in the trend, and we trade down into two times our risk reward. So that's, that's a simple approach to how we can use the corrective patterns, the ABC pattern, to get into, um, to get into the, the trend. Now, we could, if we wanted to reduce our risk further, is we could use price rejection candles, coinciding, remember, our dual time frame analysis. So when we get, uh, when we get a, a, a crossover with the um, stochastic and we get price pattern confirmation, so in this instance, we will be looking at a bearish rejection candle. We could, in, we could increase or, or develop a better risk reward scenario by playing the break of that candle. Now, what are, the, uh, what, what are the additional risks that we would have using the candlestick break here? Well, let's think about it. What were some of our criteria? Our criteria was that we trade back, it's that once, uh, once, once we have um, made that C point and we're looking for the rejection, fortunately in this instance, the candle trades back into our AB range. So we're getting part of the confirmation. Again, we're getting a little bit more conviction in the trade because we trade back into the AB. And then we get the final confirmation when we trade through the B swing low. So we can enhance our risk reward. We can get a lower risk or a lower capital exposure by using price pattern confirmation. So that bearish rejection of our potential C point coinciding with the um, rollover here in the stochastic, going back to our uh, last week's session. So once we get the RSI stochastic divergence and we get that bearish rejection in price action, we can actually take a lower risk, a lower capital exposure trade by putting on a position using price patterns. Okay. And again, once again, what we're trying to do as much as possible as traders, we know psychologically that we are once we've got um, capital on the line and we're trading the market to a live account, that when we're starting to see these dollar signs tick up and down, we can we can, if we're certainly if we're less experienced, make decisions based upon emotion that don't necessarily adhere to um, rational trading rules. So in this instance, we use our, we can use the stochastic to give us that other that next level of objectivity. So we're trading from a logical and rational perspective. So we use that stochastic rollover to confirm the price pattern, and once again, we just get that enhanced level of risk reward. Does that make sense to everyone? A why in the chat box, please, if you're following along. I'll just take a sip of water before we continue. 
Right, so now that we understand what corrections look like, let's see if we can find, uh, let's go to uh, the next swing and see if that meets the criteria for a correction. Well, we know that there has to be a low, a reaction low, which we've got, we get a reaction high, okay, but that this reaction high is not followed by a B low. So let's just draw in what we expect to happen here. So we'd be expecting, this is our A point, this, is, this could be a B here, it looks like prices are ticking back up, but we don't exceed our A point, okay? We don't exceed our A point, price doesn't make a new high, so that doesn't suggest at this stage that we've met the minimum criteria for this pattern to actually be a full correction, and we actually roll over and make new lows. And again, now we get a reaction low. This is, this, is, this is information we can use, you see, because what we're starting to learn here is that not all these pullbacks or, or all these, um, these upticks in price in this continued down move qualify as corrective patterns, okay? These are simply just profit taking or pauses in the market. So we don't want to get sucked in here and we're just going to wait and see now. Bear in mind, we've got our ABCD pattern up here. We make a reaction low, reaction high. Now in this instance, we spike below that prior low. So if we're going to use the A, B, we don't get a, a B point here, so we don't get a C, so there's no corrective pattern here, but now we get a low, a reaction high, a pullback, yes, and then we exceed the A point, so that qualifies now as an ABC. Yes, does that make sense to everyone? So we have a reaction low, a reaction high, so we immediately we're tracking the reaction high as our A point, our reaction low is our B point, and then we have a new high, so that qualifies, that meets the minimum requirement for an ABC correction. Just using that simple overlapping principle, we then trade back into the range of AB with a bearish reversal candle. So now if we're starting to think about, our do we have an opportunity to put a trade on here? Well, from, a pri from purely a price um, perspective, we have met the minimum requirements for the swing, and we've got a bearish rejection here. Our stops would obviously again just be back above our C point, and then what we'd be looking for as a minimum is two to one our risk reward. And you can see how price ultimately played out. We also then on this candle we got the additional com confirmation of that divergence in the RSI stochastic, suggesting that we're going to potentially roll over. Okay, so there again, we've got our minimum criteria, an A, B, C, and we watch then for how price responds. We get a bearish rejection candle. Stochastic, RSI stochastic confirms. So that gives us now an objective read on the price pattern. And then we trade lower down to two times our risk as our minimum um, objective for the trade. Now, then price makes a reaction low, and then we get another reaction high here. This is important now because remember what I said, although we are going to see more often than not these ABC patterns are the corrections and we can certainly trade them, they don't work every time, nothing does. And we want to be cognizant of that as traders, okay? So here we go. So we get our A point, our B point, and we exceed just by a tick there our, um, our A point. It's, it's pretty marginal, and if you and here's, here 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 is a is a great rule of thumb for you guys as you as you uh, proceed with this. If you have to squint at the chart to see whether or not that high has just been taken out, more often than not, if that's the case, if you're having to squint to see a pattern, ignore it. Because what we want, well, ultimately what we're looking to do is we're looking to trade high probability scenarios. If we're having to, if we're having to really get up close to the screen and measure to the pit whether or not this high exceeds that high, it's probably going to be a false signal. Okay, so that's just a little piece of information that you can take away there. If you have to squint at the chart to see the pattern, it's probably a false signal. But anyway, 
We get another swing point here. So this now, A, B, C, we get that bearish rejection candle. If we look at the stochastic, it's confirmed. So now, again, if we were just using the price action setup, okay, stop above our C point. Okay, we're looking for two times our risk. So let's just map out where we need to get to there. Now, price triggers into the trade, and it, it looks like it's uh, it's going to work out. But we make another swing high, and we get stopped. We would have been stopped out of the position, which is fine because we accept as traders, we are not going to we're, we're not looking to win every every single trade that we put into the market. That's just simply not going to uh, not going to be happening. What we're looking for is to marginally win more than we lose in terms of um, the probability of our setup. But more importantly, the profitability of the setup is important. So if we're always taking that two to one out of the market, then it's, it works in our favor. When we take, uh, in this instance, we take our loss, so we're out of the trade and that's fine. And then we just simply watch the market. So we, if we, if we can then get another swing high here, yeah? and then the A, B, C, but no, we've taken out the prior swing C point here. So that suggests that this correction may well be terminated, okay? So we don't want, if, if we, want, we don't want to take out the prior swing high in the, in the trend. Does that make sense to everyone? So here's another filter we can use to basically mitigate those trades that have a lower probability scenario, yeah? Why in the chat box if you're following along? Now, ultimately, we do make a new low in price, and that's fine. But we're, we're, we're looking at this stage at, um, at, a, at, a, at a bigger corrective pattern that's taking place there, because this C point is aligned more likely to this B point. And then we have a bigger corrective pattern in the in the overall cycle. But what we need to be aware of is that we, we're, like I said just just now, is we're not going to be consistently able to um, hit these trades. There are a few setups within each trend, and if we have our risk reward properly managed, then that will give us a sufficient opportunity. So let's go and look at a, a dual time frame example now. Okay. So we got, um, this is on, on the dual time frame. So we're looking now at a daily chart, okay? This is daily data in this chart of the Euro dollar, just a, a recent chart. Um, this, this setup uh, was actually posted um, on my uh, Ticknell blog that you can follow along to. You can sign up and get, um, get the email alerts for this. What I'm gonna walk you through now is in real time, some examples of this ABC corrective pattern in uh, in detail, and like I said, this week we, these pattern, the practical pattern recognition is going to be split into two sections. This week we're just covering the corrective patterns. Now on Thursday of next week we are going to look at the trend pattern. Okay, so we're only thinking about corrections today. We this. This, this pattern, practical pattern recognition section is split into two because it's incredibly important and will really help you as you, uh, as you move on to, um, to, to trading the markets. If you're, like I said, if you're easily able to identify um, patterns in the market, whether we're in trend or correction, um, it will have, be of significant use to you in your trading career. Um, but more importantly, um, we want to take our time to learn this and immerse ourselves in this information. So we're looking now, we have a trend move to the downside, okay? You can see here, non-overlapping moves to the downside. We then get our A, this is, a, this is on the daily time frame, so this is helping us to identify the bigger trend. So let's look at the, uh, let's put in our levels here. So we have our A, B, C. So we have a reaction low into a reaction high. We also know we get that stochastic here, helping to confirm when the reaction high is in place. We then get the stochastic making a low, and then we have our B points, okay? Is everyone following there? We have our A, B, 
And now we trade to the upside and we're looking for a C point. What's the minimum criteria for the C point? Well, we know that we have to exceed our A. If we exceed it and we're having to squint, we're going to ignore or we're going to um, pass on those setups because we want it, we want our setups to be jumping off the charts at us. Okay. We want to take the AAA setups, and more often than not, they just jump off the charts. So in this instance, we trade up into our ABC. So here's our, our criteria is met. We've got stochastics all set up. And this is on the daily time frame. Now what we're going to do, once we see this pattern on the daily time frame, we're going to try and improve our risk reward by trading the intraday time frame, which for us, in this instance, is the hourly. So this is our C point. Here, this C point here is this high that we made. Prices decline. What do we know at this stage about this decline? Well, what I can tell you just by eyeballing it is the swings are non overlapping. Okay? When they don't overlap, that is our first indication that we may be in trend. Again, we're going to cover trend criteria in more detail next week, but for now, we're focused on the corrections. So, what do we look for in our corrections? Well, we want to see the A, B, C pattern, don't we, on this lower time frame. So we have our, our swing low, our reaction high, and our V point, okay? And then we trade up into a new high that qualifies as our C point. And in this instance, another important aspect of these um, corrections, the ideal correction, now notice, when I, notice the, the terminology I'm using here, the ideal correction. That I did not say the every time correction, the ideal correction, will be equidistant in length. So the A, B to the C point will be equidistant. Okay, so that's on the, the this, this, this hit, this, what we're looking at here is the hourly time frame. Let's just hop over now and look back at the daily time frame and see is our A, B, C, D, equidistant. Not in this instant it isn't, but it's just shy of that. Okay, and that's on the daily time frame. So we want to be looking for the level of equality in our ABC patterns. Now, what we've got here on the intraday time frame is that equality. We trade right up into our C point and we get that price rejection. Yeah, we get our divergent in our intraday stochastic confirms that we can have a trade and a trade could be in play here. So if we're going to use the same idea, we're looking at a bearish rejection. Whoops, we didn't run that one. Let's remove that. And let's go to a short position. So we've got a bearish rejection candle from the ideal corrective target of an equidistant swing. And then we're looking for again two times our risk. Now I say two times our risk is a a minimum criteria for our trade because believe me and you know this is coming from someone who's been trading in the markets for 15 years profitably if you can consistently get two times your risk reward from your your trade trading plan or your trading strategy you will be successful over the over the long run okay I'm not talking about over the next week or the next month over years of market exposure you will be successful but when we get this pattern here versus a trend like decline from a potential daily corrected target, then what we could think to ourselves, we're actually going to hold this trade for, a, for an extended period and actually look for some structure breaks. So if we look down here for a break of the prior swing low, yeah, then we'd actually be gaining close to six times our risk, which is a fantastic um, of trading scenario. But if we're then to play the trends and just trail our stocks behind swing highs, we can even just use the stochastic swing high here. So every time the stochastic makes a new high, we trail our stocks. Yeah. Then we can actually enhance our returns significantly. So we would have been taken out here at the 112 level. Uh, sorry, 111.20. So if we, that's where we trade our stops to, then that's you know that's giving us a 
reward to our initial risk up here. So let's again, let's just re quickly review here as we're coming to the end of, uh, of, of this content for today. We want to be looking for A, B, C corrections versus a trend. As I said, next week we're going to go into more detail about how we highlight what a trend is so we can identify where we are within that trend. But today we've been focusing on corrective patterns. And the main criteria for the corrective pattern is overlapping price action. The wave C should exceed the extreme of wave A. Ideally, wave a will be an equal length to wave C. If we exceed that, then we probably have uh, are, are in a new trend. So we can use that equality target A to C as giving us an objective identification as to whether or not we're still in corrective territory or potentially moving into a new trend. Because like I said at the beginning, not every corrective pattern is going to be overlapping. Sometimes there will be overlapping price action, but it commences a new trend. And that's fine because we don't need the pattern to work every time for it to be a profitable trading strategy. Okay. And then we know finally a trade beyond the wave B extremes, this is our wave B extreme, is a, is a structural signal that the correction is more likely than not complete. Okay. Okay, guys, I've been, uh, let's take us for about 40 minutes here. So hopefully you're getting an, a good idea. Um, you'll have the opportunity to obviously rewatch this, uh, the recording of this session. But hopefully now you're getting, to, getting a sense of how you can identify these corrective ABC patterns. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up the floor here for any questions that you might have. If you want to type those into the chat box and I'll, uh, I'll do my best to get through as, as many as I can here um, in the next couple of minutes. So any questions, please um, type into the chat box. I'll just take a quick sip of water. Any questions, guys? Like I say, this is the uh, corrective phase of the ABC. Next week, um, we are going to look at the uh, trend criteria. Um, if you, sorry, Andrea, yeah, if you watch the beginning of the video, I explain that we, we, we're drawing on some principles from Elliott Wave here, but um, the challenge for many traders, especially when you're new to, new to the business, is that Elliott Wave can, can basically uh, cause almost a, a paralysis by analysis. You know, like I said, a lot of uh, Elliott Wave so-called traders are actually really just analysts or almost academics, really. They're not involved in practically using Elliott Wave to, um, to, to necessarily trade the markets profitably. And so what I like to do is, is basically draw on some of those principles because the idea of trend and correction is important concepts in the market. What I'm looking to do is to draw on some of those and actually build in some practicality and some objectivity so that we don't get lost in the analysis and that we can actually use some of those concepts to make objective trading decisions. So that's a good question. Don't worry about the fact you, uh, you won't hear from the beginning, that's fine. Um, I suggest if you re it, the recording will be posted later today. And if you take a look at that, um, I, I just explained at the beginning what I mean in terms of um, of how we draw upon some of these these Elliott wave concepts without getting bogged down in the the academic or the theory uh, of them. Does that make sense, Andrew? Any other questions, guys? Yep, that's right, Andrew. Um, okay, look, let's uh, let's do this. Let's change this chart here to the daily. So you. Uh, 
So USD, so here we have, and then let's break that into a 60. So here we have, this is our daily chart. Now, again, overlapping price action, yeah? Following along, overlap, we've made non-overlapping, up into a high, we pull back, overlapping price action. A, B, uh, sorry, A, one second guys, sorry. Let me draw this in. So we have an A, a B, and then C. And then ultimately, um, what we get here is another A, B, and C. We'll cover this in, in next week's session. This is a slightly more um, complex correction, but we will uh, we will cover it um, in in next week's. Once we complete the trading section, we'll then look at the complex correction as the final piece of this this puzzle. But then we break from the corrective phase in a non-overlapping price action, which, as we know, suggests the potential um, for a trend. Okay, so let's bring this up to. Uh, 60 minute, and let's change that to so here's the 60 minute chart of gold now and what we can see is overlapping price action okay so suggest we're we're in consolidation here within this um, within this bullish advance now where we're in this messy consolidation these are the types of, of price patterns that were best to avoid as they don't offer um, specifically high probability trading scenarios but if we look on the daily chart we have um, we have the trend move to the upside now let's see if we can see um, where a correction would be so we have um, let's draw in this at the moment would be the pattern we'd be looking at. So we have an A, B, and then a C, probably much deeper from a quality perspective if that's how we're, we're going to trade. Okay. So whilst we hold this B high, is the potential for the equality C to, trade to, to set up to the downside. Or alternatively, if we consider, let's zoom out a couple of levels here, can we consider this pullback, can we consider this decline as potentially a trend? Well, we can, um, we certainly can. And if that is the case, then we'd be looking for an ABC correction. So if we're looking for equality, we would have, this is our low, this is our A point and our B point. Have we met the minimum criteria for a trend correction to the upside? Well, we haven't yet. But we do know this is heavily overlapping price action. So if gold was to, um, to pop up into this zone and we saw a rejection there, then we could still, we could basically, uh, you, you could be looking at an opportunity to enter into the correction that we've just identified maybe taking place. Does that make sense? You can see how you can use these patterns to align yourself on multiple time frames. Yeah? Like I said, what we're going to do next week, we're going to cover um, the trend section. And then once we've got the trend and we've got the simple uh, corrective pattern complete, we'll then cover how you can use these complex patterns to enter with trend as well. Okay? So if there aren't any other questions, I'll wrap this up here. I hope it's been useful and um, I suggest you take an opportunity to, uh, to review the recording and, uh, and then hopefully you'll be prepared for next week's session when we cover how we can objectively identify the minimum conditions or criteria to see whether or not we are in trend or correction. And we're going to be focusing on the trend elements of that next week. Thanks very much for your time, everyone, and, uh, and enjoy your weekends.